everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty centre step easel card. Now I actually saw a tutorial by Dee Slater and uh, she shows this one, it's from a few years ago. And I just thought it was a really lovely design. Now hers is smaller so if you want to ha you know, make a smaller version from one piece of 12 by 12, I'll share Dee's tutorial below this one. But this one is so it's a six by six size because you know I like to make bigger cards. And basically what happens is you, I've, this is how I'm doing this one, is you fold it down and then this will fold up and then that whole piece will sit in your six by six envelope. So when it opens up, this bit will just slide out. So it's really easy for that person you know, to understand how it works. But then you've got room inside here to write your message or alternatively you could write something on the back. And you could also have this folding around the back like that. Okay, so it's entirely up to you how you want this one to kind of work, but I, I really like the profile of it. You know, I like those kind of mantle pleasers and uh, I think this is stunning. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make it. Okay, so I have a template and I have my one already cut. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that to one side. So you are gonna need a piece of six by 12. This is just my template, it's actually a piece of A4, so ignore the length, you will need yours to be 12, otherwise it won't stand properly. So what you wanna do, first of all, is along the six inch side, you wanna come in one and a quarter, mark a pencil mark, Come in here, one and a quarter, and mark a pencil mark. And then just with your ruler, just draw a pencil line right the way down from those two markers. Okay, so you'll see my pencil lines there. Just goes under that red, but all the way down there and all the way down there. Then when you've done your pencil lines, pop it into your scoreboard. And I find it quite handy to have my T-square ruler when I do this. But you want to score at one inch, okay, and then you wanna miss the middle and then score again at one inch. And this is where this comes in handy. So if you lie this, you know, line it up next to the one inch, you can score and then you can just follow the ruler down and then score again. And then again at two, and I can just keep my stylus there, everything lines up, hover it over the middle bit and then score again. Then you wanna score at six, but this time just in the middle section. So look at where the six is, lie the ruler down, and then you can just start scoring in the center there. And then lastly at seven, and you're gonna score, miss the middle and score. Okay, so you will have where I've got all the black pen, that's your score lines. And then you'll have those pencil lines running right down here. The red lines are your cut lines, so that's what I'll tell you now. Again, I have already prepared mine and cut it all there, but you just wanna make sure you've got a nice sharp cutting knife and a metal ruler. Okay, and you're going to cut from the first score line to the last score line. And it doesn't matter whether you do it this way up, it will be the first score line to the last score line. And you just want to keep it nice and straight, so mine's that red line, and you're going to join the end of this score line here, and then you're going to cut all the way down to that one there. And what you will end up with is this. So you can see here, if I lie this one down next to it, so you can make sense of everything. The score lines, yeah, you can just about see them. So here's my one inch score line, then my two inch, then my six just in the middle, and then the seven, okay? And then cut from the first to the last on both sides, and it will give you this. Okay, so hopefully that's, um, you know, made that easy to understand and I will write you know score lines and I'll do all the little bits and pieces there and I'll write what that's for and I'll take a photo and pop that on my blog. So once you've then got that rub your pencil marks out because yours will be on proper paper. Starting from the bottom so you'll have a big area here it's the end it's where you've done your one and your two score lines. Your one inch one will become a mountain fold, your two inch will become valley. So just kind of push them don't worry too much for the minute the middle six will become a mountain and those last seven inch ones will become mountains. And then the whole thing will fold into a six by six size. Now that on its own is a really nice card and I've done many stepper cards and I don't know if I've actually done a six by six. So I will, um, I'll add that to the stepper card playlist because this is a lovely card. I've made these kinds, you know, many times, but there you can see and that stands up, you can write inside, on the back, everything. All we're doing is adding this additional piece here, which again, just 
yeah it just looks nice it's nice to just do <laughs> change something up a little bit so this piece here is seven by six and along the seven inch side you just want to score at one inch and just fold in half okay fold and burnish now it's up to you where you want to fold where you want to stick this if you want to stick it inside or on the back I'm putting mine on the back because it's the back no one's going to see it and I will probably have my message on the inside okay so I'm going to add some glue and then I'm just going to pop that in here. So, you know, take what you want from this tutorial. It, you know, you might think, well, I can't be bothered to add that bottom bit. <laughs> and you don't have to. It is a really nice card on its own. And um, I just like the thought of having it folded up like that. And then someone takes it out of the envelope, brings it down. You know, it's got lots of space for signatures. So again, I know many of you make cards for work colleagues. You know, and lots of people in the office or the workplace have got to, you know, fill it out, fill it out, you know, sign it. So this is a great card for that because you've got in there, you've got here, all there, there, depending on how you decorate it. You know, you could really, yeah, fill it. So really burnish all of those score lines. Make sure you get the ones under here. I know I've already done them, but I'm just going to do them again. And then I'm just going to fold that one back over and just burnish that as well like so okay so there we have it now it's down to the decoration so again I'll just bring this one in here just so you can see how you know you can put it together I need to stamp in here but I can pop that in my stamping platform because it's completely flat and I can still stamp something nicely there when I get around to it and it's easy to fill out as well but you can see how you know it all comes together and I love these decoupage toppers and that is all from the Paper Posies collection. So I'm using the six by six one today. I've already gone ahead and done my mats and layers and I'm bringing in my favorite holographic cardstock here. So I've gone and stuck down everything there. I'm just gonna then attach it. I've lost a little square, I'll have to look for them in a minute. So basically you want a piece of five and three quarters by five and three quarters mirrored card or whatever you're using to go on the base and then a piece of five and a half by five and a half pattern paper and that is going to stick on the bottom in there okay this piece here is for my center panel and this measures three and a quarter by five and three quarters and the pattern paper is three by five and a half that should be I've gone a bit wrong with my yeah five and a half because it was five and three quarters that is going to go in the middle here love the way that catches the light and then these two are for your side panels and these ones measure one inch by four and three quarters and then the pattern is three quarters of an inch by four and a half and then you'll have two pieces like this as well again all optional but it's one inch by three quarters and then the pattern is three quarters of an inch by half an inch it's really tiny but the details like that do you know you do notice it so I'm going to go and stick all this down and then we can do some really pretty little details. Okay, so there you go, there's that. Look at it, it's just so cool. I, I can't even tell you how many packs of that holographic cardstock I've brought. Let me show you it actually. Again, I always forget, but there might be new people watching. It's this stuff here, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, it's my go-to because it's a strong card stock as well, so you can use it for card bases. Um, but it's by Dovecraft. I've linked it. It's, it's pretty much linked in every video, but I know loads of you have it. So now we're going to start decorating. Now I have some toppers already made up. I've got this one here, which could look really nice on the bottom there. Or it could also look really good there. And then I have a sentiment down the bottom. So I'm just pulling in really all like the accessories. But I've got these doilies and they actually work really well with this collection. I mean, I could have a doily on the bottom and like do a bit of layering and stuff. Um, you know, then you would have it quite far back. Because it's up to you because it's an easel kind of effect. You know, you can pull that stepper piece quite far back. Um, I mean, open it out a little bit because you want to see some of it, but you can kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve. It's just creating like layers, but these are really nice. I wouldn't mind bringing them in. Um, again, you can see what I've done here. So we've got the bunting, which I just love. I don't think I'm going to bring the bunting in again. I want to do something different on this one. 
I've got all of this. This is all from that collection which I showed you, so I want to kind of have a little play around. Okay, so that's what I've ended up doing. I spent way too long on this, but I've just put the doily right in the centre, and I like it kind of over, overlapping here. And then that topper, and then I've just used one of the extra topper pieces for the love and the bow there. So I kept it quite simple actually. But I've got these two pieces here for inside and the back. It's up to you if you want to put both on. It does strengthen the card. And uh, like I said, if you're having multiple signatures on this and you, you just want to do lots of stamping, you'll want one or two pieces that are five and three quarters by four and three quarters. So I'm going to stick one inside and one on the back. Okay, so I'll just bring it up again there and you can see inside lots and lots of space and on the back there as well and it all just folds up. If you have got quite a lot of bulk to it then I have the 6x6 envelope box that this will go in and I'll link it up here. But um, it will go in a normal envelope, a 6x6. I mean I have done decoupage on this, I know not everybody will do that. Some of you might just have a nice stamped image so yours will be pretty flat. Um, so you won't have any problems there at all. So bear that in mind obviously, you know, different parts of the world, we've all got different, uh, you know, rules and stuff when it comes to posting. So, um, but I think in the box it'd be lovely as one to give to someone in person as well. So anyway, there you have it. Super pleased with these. I'll share all the links to everything as always below and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.